Thanks, Chair. Uh, could I ask Anne O'Leary, um, as Chair of the Audit and Risk Committee, how many qualified accountants, apart from yourself, have been on the Audit and Risk Committee uh, oh, while you're there? I should make it clear first, I'm not a qualified accountant, I'm a civil engineer. Okay. But um, no, there hasn't been, um, on, on my time, there hasn't been a qualified accountant. On the Audit and Risk on Committee? The Audit and Risk Committee. Okay. Um, that's pretty By the way, I think it would be a brilliant idea, but it's not my job to appoint people onto the committee. Yeah. It's pretty extraordinary. Um, so it's yourself, two journalists, and a lawyer mediator. Um, That's correct. Corporate codes require that an audit committee should include at least one independent director um, with an accountancy or auditing background. So why was why was this ignored? Um, just looking around, DAA, for example, um, a committee of four, three of whom have accountancy expertise. On post, two of its four have accountancy expertise, but RT nobody. Um, Deputy, it wasn't my position to put yeah. people on my committee. I was just asked to be the chair, and I said yes, okay. I would. But it's important for the for the committee that this, these facts are, are are out there because this is ultimately an accounting uh, finance problem, and this is the audit and risk committee, and no accounting or auditing expertise. Was there any? Could I ask? Is anybody? Just, just a moment, Miss Frankers. Yeah, yeah. Could I ask? Apart from yourself, um, Shewan, and you've just re recently come in, but I'm, I'm looking at pre-2022, when all of the damage was done. Um, was there anyone on the RT board with accountancy or uh, auditing expertise? Anyone who spoke the language of auditors? There, there was. Uh, and um, Shane Nocton was the former chief uh, financial officer at the Economist Group when he left the board in early 2020. So okay. he was a qualified accountant and okay. actually did sit on the Audit and okay. Risk Committee up until that point. Uh, it, it's worth noting, uh, Deputy, if, if, if I may, uh, just when we have gone out, including before this committee, uh, which obviously appoints a, a significant number of members to the board, we did ask specifically for accounting qualifications uh, up until Chewan's appointment, however, there wasn't uh, an since, accountant. Since, since Shane Acton left, there's no one... We did, a, we did request of this committee to appoint but an there's, accountant. There's nobody, what you're saying to me now is there's nobody, well, apart, from the, the chair. apart from the chair, who was recently appointed, but for that period there was nobody at all. As I okay. said, we did ask and it wasn't... Could I ask, just in relation to the remuneration committee, um, how many meetings were held in 2018? Um, I'd have to ask Paula to... I, I don't have the figures off the top of my head. I think okay. they were included in one. the documents. One. Yeah, furnished. And 2019? Yes. I think there was no. One. One, OK. 2020? No. Zero. 2021? One. One. And 2022? None. None. Um, so there's a, a rule, your own rules, that there should be a minimum of at least two meetings per annum. Correct. So, could I ask the entire board, did anybody raise this, that there was no meetings of, of the remuneration committee happening? By, by the way, this is a remuneration issue. All of this exploded. It's going to cost the organisation 50 million because of massive failings in relation to remuneration. This board, and so you need to start owning this now yourselves. I've heard plenty of scapegoats, and I've heard plenty of people thrown under buses. But you're the board. You're in charge of oversight. Did anybody on the board raise the fact that the Remuneration Committee only met a handful of times, broke its own rules over the last five years? Anybody? No, I'm just asking this simple question. It's nobody. Nobody raised this. Or did someone raise this and what happened? Did the Secretary raise it? Deputy, there's no doubt that there was a lapse of governance in relation to... Did, did holding, you ever point out to the board? Uh, ...holding to remuneration committee meetings. It would appear that the meetings were organised on an ad hoc basis as requested. And the former chair stated, I think in this committee, um, that she had had conversations with the director general in relation to highest earner pay, but that was not a substitute for proper formal remuneration yeah. committee so, meetings. What I have here is uh, two agendas... Uh, two minutes. This is between 2017 and June 2023. That's that's all we've got in terms of documentation relating to the <coughs> remuneration committee. And I reiterate, this is a remuneration issue. This whole thing blew up from, uh, and both meetings seem to have been about uh, pay for senior executives and the um, the car allowance as well. 
Um, that seems to be, and uh, that seems to be all that was discussed. Now, uh, since, Deputy, can I, can I make can I just one point since, just there in relation to that? That is an issue with the previous terms of reference of the committee that it didn't specifically call out certain things. Mm -hmm. That has now been corrected and well, amended. Well, I'm glad to say amendments. that since this whole thing blew up, the 30th of June was the first meeting. There's been three meetings, so three meetings in three months, and before that we had uh, a handful, three or four meetings in the space of five or six years. So I think when we're looking at what happened here, what went wrong here, that is a major component, I think, in terms of giving us the answer. Um, could I just say, um, Mr. Keo, you were, um, you've been on the board for a long time now. Um, just in relation to self-evaluation um, and the code of practice for the governance of state bodies, uh, was the decision not to hold successive self-evaluations a breach of the code in 2016, 17, 19, 20, and 21? Sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. I only joined the board at the end of 2018. Okay. Uh, there was a strenuous internal uh, self-evaluation, which I think has been furnished to this yeah. committee uh, last year. You give yourself really high marks. No, we didn't actually. We didn't. Uh, it, it raised a number of significant questions about just, diversity just and inclusion. And why wasn't board an external? Why wasn't an external uh, evaluation? It, why didn't that happen? Even though it's in the rules, it should happen every three it, years. It should have happened, and it didn't happen during the COVID period. And also, we were waiting, I think, about six to seven months for four new board members to arrive. So but isn't that an absurd best. excuse that you're waiting for? You're always going to be waiting for board members to excuse. There's always going to be a reason. No, like something this, do you not think that this is a major failing on behalf of the board? I think it should have happened, Deputy, yeah. And was it ever raised at the board that this should happen? It, it came up at a board meeting, and it was decided to wait while COVID was raised ongoing. Raised by whom? By the board, by the chair at the time, I believe. Chair at the time. And there was kickback from the board about external evaluation? No kickback, Deputy. No kick but, but it didn't happen, though, did it? No, it didn't. No. So what, what, how was it decided that it wouldn't happen? It was decided that while COVID was ongoing, it was very difficult to do that sort of external self-evaluation, but the internal audit function within RTE yeah. did a comprehensive board evaluation. By, by the way, the findings of the board and the questions in terms of their own performance is averages at 4 out of 5, 80%. These are kind of Saddam Hussein approval ratings, uh, 80%. Um, I don't think that they deserved 80%, to be honest. Of course, that's my own view. Um, just in relation to Toy Show, the musical, and again, I talked about scapegoating and I talked about people being thrown under the bus and we had uh, Mr. Coveney here uh, and, uh, in July and got a lot of uh, negativity in relation to Toy Show, the musical. But the reality is that whereas he might have been directly in charge, the reality is the board, I asked him on the day, did anyone shout stop? Did anyone say no? Did anyone on the board raise objections prior to it becoming a flop. Did it come before the board? Um, can I answer that? I wasn't there, but it did, uh, it did there was a presentation before the board, it before the audit and uh, risk and uh, some people from the programme committee. And it was approved by the board? I don't think there was a... Then we had a fairly lengthy discussion with um, the head of commercial and with Rory Coveney. We then brought it to the board. We did not have a vote on it. We didn't bring it or propose it to the board. A number of things had happened at the time that they, that they had gone ahead with. However, I'd much rather see the full um, result of the Grant Thornton review yeah. before there, I say any more. Was there anyone against the sure. proposal? Pardon? Was there anyone on the board who objected to it at the time? A lot of, an awful lot of questions were asked and they weren't answered. But it still went ahead. Sure, like, I mean, what's the board for? If you're asking questions, they're not answered. Yes, it still goes ahead. Sure, what was the point of even asking the questions? This is ludicrous. Like, you're, you're, looking, that, you're that looking for 50 million from the taxpayer, and I get the answers to basic questions here. We're only going around in circles. Uh, can I just say that, yes, there is questions over the governance in that, in, with that uh, project, um, and we're awaiting the Grand Thornton 3 report. I, I believe there's serious questions and serious reviews that the board has to take based on that, and we have changed some of how we operate uh, in relation to that in the interim. Yeah, but like when all of this happened, like the same board people who, who were there at the time are still here now, and you're looking for 50 million. I, my license is up for renewal this month. It's 160 euro. I wouldn't trust you with my 160 euro. Never mind 160 million. I'd rather go down to Murphy's Bar and Bultines and buy a round of drinks. At least I'd know where my, my money went. I, I, I get more cultural content and I get more straight talking from people. But this is, this is the, the position you're in at the moment. And I don't think there's any realisation from the board of your role in this. 
My first parliamentary question on the licence fees showed that there wasn't a drop-off in licence fee. It was working. You might say um, soon that, that it's antiquated. Yeah, in your opening statement, you said that. And you said that it's not fit for purpose and all that. But it was bringing in £160 million per annum up, up, up until now. The first question response that I got was on the 17th of July showing a drop-off. It was working well up until, up until then. Not perfect. This, this committee has said it's not perfect. But you need to own the fact that you've cost £50 million in licence revenue through your failings as a board. And I'm not seeing any acknowledgement of that. I'm seeing loads of finger pointing at different people, but I'm not seeing this board accept that you had a huge role in this and your, your failures from a corporate governance point of view is responsible for this huge loss, this huge hole in the finances and the massive problems that the new DG faces now in trying to steer the ship. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not sensing it from anyone here. Uh, well, uh, what I'm saying to you is we've recognised that there's probably going to be in the region of 21 million of a drop on la in this year on yeah. the licence fee. And in the full we calendar also, year, full 12 no, months, it'll be up to 50 if it c continues at the same rate. Yeah, and we That's also are coming from a place where we had the highest division rate in Europe anyway. Uh, prior to that. The bottom line is, and, and there's the, 50 million. Does that not no, occur to you that that's a huge loss and that you're responsible for it? Well, uh, You're not accepting responsibility, are you? I, I am re accepting responsibility. It doesn't but look I'm not, it. But I'm sorry, I don't think we can accept responsibility in relation You're to the, the failings to address the issues around the funding model for RTE. Your board, there was 160, the mathematics of it are, there was 160 million coming in, there's now going to be 50 million less. You need to accept responsibility because of your failings. It's going to be 21 million Over less 12 months. in if we, terms, if we, and the 34 million that has been requested relates to other issues in, which were identified in the future uh, media. You still don't get report. it. You still no, don't I get it. No, I accept it. I'm not, but you don't look to me. You also have to accept could I ask, that there's a fundamental problem with the licence fee. Could I ask, is the barter accounts, are they still open, the slush funds? Are they still operating? With respect, Deputy, I think throwing in words like slush funds are not helpful. We've, we've reformed the barter account. It is now purely for um, sale of TV advertising. Who uh, had the power to approve the transactions from the Bacter account? I call it a slush fund, that's what it was. It was well, it was not a slush fund, it was a Bacter account. It was inappropriately was. used and the controls were not in place. Those flip flops. Look, most with people respect, would call with it a respect. Slush fund. But could you answer me the question, please? What is the question? Who, was, who was responsible for signing off on the transactions? We didn't find that out yet either, did we? Who was responsible for signing yeah. off the Bacter account? The commercial director was responsible. So who was, there was Geraldine O'Leary, is it? The commercial director. Who is it? Jim Jennings. And Jim Jennings, yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. no, no. Gerald, commercial director was responsible for signing off the. So, who, who was that? Geraldine. Okay. All right. Thanks. Uh, could I ask, just in relation to the movie show uh, uh, documentation that we received, why was so much of that redacted? Can I answer that one? Yep. So the movie show was a production which I produced through an independent production company in 2011, 2012. I know I asked about it here yep. in July. The reason it was redacted is there the commercial terms. So there's commercial sensitivity in terms of the commercial okay. partner. Everything else is in there because... Who decided what would be redacted? Who was in the room? In terms of what would be redacted? Yeah. So I asked uh, um, the director of legal uh, to redact it in terms of commercial terms. Did you have an input in it? In terms of what was absolutely, redacted? well, I gave the instruction that the but commercial terms... But didn't you have a conflict uh, definitely, there, Mr Lynch? If you can just let me explain. The reason the commercial terms uh, were redacted is, obviously, in order to deliver the paperwork to the committee, the first thing I needed to do was write to the advertising agency to say this has been requested. We will be redacting the commercial terms because they're not in dispute here. The question, should you not have... The question, the question that was framed was, was there editorial interference from the commercial yeah. client? Should you not have distanced yourself from the redaction uh, process because you actually had a, an involvement in the production, didn't you? Yeah, but the question that was... Do you was think it was appropriate that you decided what was and what wasn't redacted? Well, I'm in a different role now, so obviously I'm I know, working within RTE. So related it was to you, your previous, your, a prior I, engagement that you had with yeah, RTE. Do you think I it was do, appropriate that you would have been involved with that? I do think it was appropriate. Uh, I would also say to I'm you that... I'm not so sure it was. Just, sorry, Deputy, just to answer your question, the question that we were uh, given was, was there editorial uh, influence yeah. from the commercial partner? That is the one we answered through the redactions to the show answer, yeah. all, all parts of the oh, contract that. that referred Could to. Could I ask Mr Lynch as well, did you know on the 6th of July when Geraldine O'Leary stated that the Soho House was required for meetings, did you know at the time that there was no meetings taking place there? I wasn't aware that, Soho, that, that uh, RT had an account with Soho House. 
just yeah, very very quickly. Um, with the nine a.m. slot, does the um, recruitment freeze apply to that? Now the radio RT Radio One. There are going to be any exceptions on the recruitment freeze. They'll have to come to the leadership team for critical organisational roles, but they will be by exception only. Yeah. Why did the when did the um, evaluation process for Montrose begin? Uh, as soon as I, well, before I arrived in the summer, before I took up the post, I was involved oh. in some discussions with the then executive yeah. about future strategy. I raised it with the chair on the 19th of April. Yeah. Did, did, it, did it occur? It's been going on for way longer than that. It's been, there was an attempt to try and sell some of the land uh, a few well, years. No, the, chair, the chair confirmed to this committee on the 19th of April that the site hadn't been valued. So are you it hasn't no? been valued, no. As I said to you, well, when I, did I, the process start? When did this process? Well, the whole process of looking. At, sorry. Was it can I, sorry, deputy. Can I answer the question? You're firing lots of questions. I'd like to try that's and answer my job. the question. Yeah, it's my answer. It's my job to answer them. If that's yeah, right. Yeah, if you could, but I'm trying to yeah. elicit answers, and I'm not really okay, getting. Okay, I'm, gentlemen. Okay. Um, when, when did the process start? It was yourself. Did you initiate the process of evaluation? On, on what exactly, deputy? Off the Montrose campus. No, the the. Pr depends what you mean by the process. This has been the, the sale of the land has been under consideration. Uh, since I was here last, actually, and it's been under constant consideration. It was actually considered as part of the last strategy process before I arrived, and I think it was made clear that this was not something the government wanted RTE to do. Uh, and it's now been, it's definitely part of the future strategy, and I've asked for an updated evaluate, uh, evaluation of the land, as I've explained. And uh, we will conclude on that, Deputy Griffin. I have to move on. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm now going to call on Deputy Alan Dillon. The floor is yours and you have 10 minutes. Yeah, 